So this is Yasin's current room that he's been staying in the last five, no, six days now. Has a really nice view. He has his own room because during chemo it's not safe to like um, for him to touch or use the same toilets as him. But yeah, also they were scared of infection as we mentioned in the last video as well. It's really nice. He saved um, his breakfast as well for his baby. I'm not sure if she can eat it now. We haven't seen her in one month. Well, he hasn't seen her in one month. These are his protein drinks. His favourite one is banana flavour. I'm going to ask them if, they, if we're allowed to take any home. We'll see. The GP is meant to, the doctor is meant to prescribe it. So I was just finding it a bit hard to eat now because with chemo, your mouth starts hurting quite a lot. There's teas, honey this drink, fizzy drink that he likes whenever he's feeling nauseous a bit. Here's just a fruit bowl. Clothes, bl extra clothes and blanket. Here I have gifts. My mum likes anchor butter. So you see him save that for her when <laughs> it from his breakfast. I won't film him too much because he's resting. But yeah, that's his pick line. It's finally free. The wire's out. So the machine's out. Okay, Sina, you know, you're sleeping. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm, always, I'm always sleeping. You're always sleeping. I'm feeling much better now. You know how good it feels to finally get out of these wirings and medication. I thought I couldn't talk yesterday. I couldn't eat or drink properly. Now I can do a lot of that in a much better way. I'm really left. Uh, How was the second chemo cycle? Oh, are you sleeping? Okay, you know what, we'll do it later. <laughs> hey guys, it's been a long time since I last recorded. My last video was probably maybe two weeks ago, but I'm just sharing this news that I've finally come home after spending nearly um, a month in two different hospitals. They believe that I had some sort of infection in my chest, but it turns out that after doing so many tests across my body, there was no infection. It's just a disease from the chemotherapy for my first one. In this video, I'm, I'm going to go through how the second chemo went, which is what I just went through. You know, you can see that my hair is completely gone, mostly, and it's still falling off now and then. I can still grab past my hair. My beard is quite empty. My moustache is just, it's all going by, it's all, it's all removing itself. So I'm not really touching anything. And my voice has changed a lot. My eating habits has changed. You know, I'm not eating as much as I used to and I'm not drinking as much. In fact, I'm basically a vegetable right now. <laughs> I can't even um, look after myself properly. So my wife, who's also my carer, is just doing that job for me. Now, what's so important about all of this? You know, the hard, the hardest thing about you know, doing a second chemo, or even the first or the third, etc., is that you can reach a breaking point. The cycle was definitely the hardest I've ever experienced. It was hard due to two factors. One, I was um, admitted early before my second chemo cycle to spend many nights in the hospital where the doctors, the nurses kept taking blood from my body. So I, I've got about 40 plus different holes in my arms. Um, having cannulas there, nearly 10 of them. And having a pig line, pig line switched when it wasn't necessary because they proved that it wasn't infected. That was one of the more difficult things. I was still able to do my prayers, you know. Towards the end of it, it was getting very difficult. Instead of standing up and doing the usual, you know, Islamic salah, I had to sit down and eventually lie down eventually towards the end. To the point where when I'm reciting, I barely even knew what I recited. But... As I finished the prayer, I felt much better for that split moment in time. I stopped doing wudu and started doing temayum, which is, you know, as you know, it's, it's it's like wudu, but you use part of the earth. That's a tricky one over there, but that's all I could do. Because if I did wudu, I'd get cold and I'd get sick and it doesn't work for me that way. You know, there's cases where you can do that. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, you know, the flexibility we have is, is very good. I say... One of the hard, some of the hardest points in, in during the chemotherapy or during the whole process was the fact that um, 
I was offered breakfast, lunch and dinner every time, but I stopped eating that after maybe after maybe 10 days because the food started getting started making me sick and and smelling it and having an idea where it came from made me sick. So my family had to keep on getting me new meals, either cooked from home or had to go downstairs and try to help me eat. That was very hard, you know. I'm very happy that I've got a great support system. Many of you guys came to visit me, so many of you friends, family members, and and just um, other close family f- friends as well. I appreciate all your support. Thanks. For me, you know, the best part of all of this is definitely coming home. When you're back home, you feel at peace. You know, you f- you're able to wake up in your own bed. The hardest thing, though, waking up in your own bed, though, is that sometimes you wake up to hallucinations and I still woke up as if I was in a hospital. However, the night before, when I woke up in the middle of the night, I felt like I was in a different place. But I was in a hospital, but in a different place, you could say. And that gave me some sort of relief. I don't know what that place was, but it felt good. On the last During the last five days, they did pump me with a lot of chemo. You can imagine that I'm connected to a 24-hour hydration for four days consecutively so that's 24 hours times four to keep pumping some kind of liquid to keep me going and during the second chemotherapy the ie chemotherapy they would plug me in for one hour for one liters worth of cancer drugs and then for three hours of 300 mil worth of cancer drugs i really really needed help and i was watching movies keep me going talking to my family and friends keep me going and yeah that was the main thing would I ever want to do this again? Probably not. You know, I don't actually want to do any of this again. I'm hoping I can get my, chemo, my third chemo delayed after today. But it is what it is, you know. Every test is, you test it in every possible way. And I was just watching a, a video from a, a brother who was in Guantan, Guantanamo, Bay. And this brother suffered tr- tremendous trial. He spent three years there getting beaten non-stop. Or crime he did not even commit. And every time he mentioned the word Allahu Akbar as getting beaten, you can see that the skinhead American soldiers would just smack him, just keep beating him and laughing and giggling about it. And this guy, you know, when I compare my state and even other states, I feel that we should be grateful. You know, even though we live in hard times, this is not really the hardest point. There is even there could be harder points than this. We could be this could be my absolute limit, I don't know. But when I watched that video, I was just impressed how he kept, he survived and the story that was told. And to me, this is like an example of staying strong, staying very strong. You know, we have to do our best and not give up in any type of difficulty. Anyway, this is just a, just an update where I am right now. Thank you for watching.